when my generation is retired, um, and many in my generation have not saved enough for retirement, are going to be relying on the public sector. Uh, we need as many productive citizens paying taxes as as we can get, and, and not more young people who are also relying on public assistance. Um, I mean, it's this is a fundamental turning point almost for the society with regard to whether we are going to have the productivity that we're going to need to support the population mix that we're going to have over the next 25, 50, 75 years. There are now more than a dozen other nations that have higher high school graduation rates than the United States. There are more than a dozen other nations that have higher math problem solving scores than our white students have. So sometimes we think the United States achievement gap problem and the challenge relative to the next the rest of the world is we have more people of color and that's the problem. They don't do well. Well, our white students are 14th or 15th in the world when it comes to math problem solving among 15 year olds. And so it's, there's work to do among every segment of the population. The problem is that we don't really know what the cost to America is of failing to educate large numbers of students. But it's really risky, <laughs> right? Um, we can hope that we get lucky and students get into their 20s and decide they're going to self-educate and they start reading and doing all these kinds of things, but it doesn't seem real likely. And so if we don't prepare large percentages of our young population, of our, of our school-aged children, to be productive citizens, we're going to have not only the baby boom generation needing a lot of help during retirement, we're going to have working age adults who are not going to be able to support themselves. Um, some of them will be the productive, productive citizens, but not at a really high level. Others will be unemployed and one way or another needing support. I like to distinguish whose fault it is from whose problem it is, <laughs> right? Okay. So if somebody runs into you in, in your car, it may not be your fault, but your car won't move now. and You've got a problem. And so it's in your interest to try to avoid the accident in the first place. And once it's happened, it's in your interest to try to ameliorate it, to try to do something to make things better. Right? I mean, we're all part of this society. It's changing in a ways in ways that that it's are hard to anticipate. We're going into a time that none of us have been there yet, right? And so we've got just imagine just think of the technological progress of the last five years. There's words we have now we didn't use, there are tools we have now. Things are changing really rapidly, particularly in this economy, where there are just huge numbers of people looking for work who can't find work. Uh, especially among low-skilled job positions, it's easy to fire somebody and hire somebody else the same afternoon, right? So you have this churn, and a lot of folks with that kind of an arrangement don't develop a, a steady, uh, a good work record that they can go on, um, have never been coached and supported in the ways that they might need to be coached and supported. And I think there are segments of the business community that are coming around to this mindset, but it needs to be broader. We need to understand that we have a civic responsibility to help prepare young adults to be adults. And some of that civic responsibility falls on the business community. One of the major challenges these days is there's a sense in which the economy doesn't need a lot of our young people. Okay, uh, Even when they have the skills, it doesn't need all of them at times. I think there will come a time when they're needed uh, when much higher percentages of the baby boom generation have retired and need to be replaced. But right now, we've got a lot of young people that the economy just doesn't need that much. And trying to find something for them to do, a reason to get up in the morning, is important. And even trying to do that is nobody's job, right? Whose job it is, is it to make sure that unemployed, unemployed young people have a productive use for their time. Okay, and these employment rate issues are at historically crisis levels. My colleague Andy Sum put out a paper with a couple of colleagues last October looking at full-time employment rates in the October following high school graduation. And let me in indicate I'm talking about full-time uh, employment rates. The highest full-time employment rate was for white males at 26%. The lowest was for black males at 5%. So we're talking about the October following high school graduation, 
in a population of young people that were told, graduate from high school, that's really important. Graduate from high school, everything will be fine. Five, these are for the one, those who are not in, not in college, the ones who are, again, not in school. Among that group, only 5% have full-time jobs. Okay, because they were told you don't have to go to college. Get out, get out of high school, you can have a career. But the kid says, I graduated high school. I don't really want to go to college right now. Among those kids, only five in 100 black males have a job. Some are in part-time jobs, okay? But it's the ones who, most of those in part-time jobs, at least a lot of them would like to have full-time jobs, and they can't find them. So what, what the, the problem is a lack of full-time employment for high school graduates who have no additional schooling beyond their high school degree. There are lots of things that need to be done in the economy that don't require a four-year college degree. Even the jobs that are being done by people who have four-year college degrees don't use most of what they learned in a four-year college degrees. And in fact, I have one colleague who's fond of pointing out that there are people who get four-year college degrees and then go back to a two-year college to get a skill that they can sell, right? And so we have to get to the point where we're making sure that all of our young people are prepared to be productive members of the workforce. There are young people who, for whom a four-year college degree is not the best fit, and we have to face that fact. The fact that we resist facing that fact means that we fail to prepare the way for young people who need options other than four-year college degrees. Okay, we have some great community colleges, we have some great programs, but we don't have enough of them. Partly part of why we are afraid to give anybody permission to give kid career guidance because they're afraid they will box them in on a, on a level that is too low. So that tension between needing to give the child some advice and some guidance and fearing that when we authorize somebody else to do it, they will target them to something that's too low is a tension that's really important to manage, but that we need to confront. And I think if we can confront that tension at the same time that we press the idea that all work is honorable, we might be able to make some, some progress in being purposeful about the things we need to get done. I like to track the number of ninth graders who can list at least three professions that they're interested in. Okay. And, and tell you two or three sentences with each of those professions about what the requirements are for being able to enter that profession. What kind of training do they need? What high school courses might be most related to those? Okay, I'd like to track um, how many high schools have integrated some career preparation or at least career-related information into their standard um, college prep uh, curriculum, for example. We could do a lot more blending that helps children have a sense of how do the things that we are learning in class get used in the world. What are the careers that might use what we, what we talked about today in, in class? What you learn actually matters, okay, that you actually need to learn to think in addition to, to get along with folks, right? And if you come out not knowing how to think, not knowing how to do basic math, not knowing how to do some basic writing, you're going to have a really difficult time finding a job. The technical manuals that young people in career and technical education often have to use are at a more advanced reading level, just in terms of the complexity of the reading, than many of the assignments that a freshman in college would get. Okay, And so our young people who, for whom we think career and technical education might be a great option, even they still need strong reading skills. Okay, You don't get a pass on basic skills just because you're going to a vocational or a career and technical education pathway. The bottom line is that we need to pursue excellence with equity, is the way I put it. That we need to try to raise the quality of the outcomes, the quality of the performance for every segment of the population, and we need to do it in a way that is conscious of group differences, that makes sure that every group has got a fair shot that's included in the collective for whom we care. We want to get to a place in time where our society is internationally preeminent. We're just as good as it gets any place. There are always going to be differences at the individual level, but when you look under that bell-shaped curve, knowing somebody's gender or race or ethnicity should give you not a clue for where they may fall because we're all kind of evenly distributed. You've got places 
people from every gender, race, and ethnicity in the top tail, in the middle, in the bottom of the distribution. That's what group proportional equality is, and we want to do it with excellence with, at a really high level. And the challenge is always, what actions can we take today that will move us in that direction?